Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. Um, we're going to go over real quick how to set up your IP live streaming camera um, in order to connect it to your local area network. So first what we do is we have our camera, we've got our uh, Netgear switch here which is PoE which is convenient, um, meaning you don't have to run a power supply once it's connected. But initially you're going to want to connect your power supply. For this particular configuration we're going to use our laptop with a CAT6 cable connected directly to the camera. So as of now, the camera is on, it's powered. I'm going to go ahead and connect from the laptop. To our camera. Using our RJ45 local area network port. So typically when you turn it on uh, with power, it does a little dance stuff, and moves around. Um, same thing with the PoE cable. Uh, if it was a PoE powered, you wouldn't need the power supply to do the same thing. Um, it's already done its little dance for this scenario, but uh, as of now, we're connected. So we're going to go to our network settings. And we're going to want to go to our ethernet setting change adapter options, right click on your ethernet card, so not the Wi-Fi ethernet card, and go to properties. Once you've gone to properties, you want to go to your TCP forward slash IPv4, the internet protocol version 4, select that, select the properties on it. As of now, you can see my Static IP address, not automatic, but static, is using the following IP address. I have already configured this for 192.168.5.150. That is the address of this laptop. The reason I did that is because by default, this PTZ camera comes with a 192.168.5.163 address. The point of this is that both networks need to be able to see each other. So if this was a 1, it would not work. If 192.168.1.150 would never find this one because it's on a .5 network. So we want to configure this from automatic to our static by typing in 192.168.5.150 in this case is just a uh, host ID that I grabbed. You can do anything from 1 through 255 and depending on how many devices you have on your network you may want to do an IP scan uh, to make sure you don't have a conflict because if you have another device on the network with uh, say the dot 150 host ID then you're, you're going to have issues so make sure it's a unique um, host ID obviously uh, once you press down here to the uh, subnet mask it automatically configures it to uh, 255.255.255.0 uh, for our gateway, we do a 192.168.5.1 and same for our DNS server. Once you have this configured, you know you're within the same um, subnet as the camera itself. So we're going to go ahead and hit OK. It may send you a message asking if you know you have uh, duplicate gateways, this may not work, just hit yes. Okay, so once we've done that, we can go ahead and close up our work settings and we can either use Firefox, Chrome or if you're using a Mac Safari. Uh, Internet Explorer IE is not technically supported as of now for most of these cameras as well as Microsoft Edge is still working out some uh, some little kinks but it should be working soon is what I'm hearing. So um, for this case let's use say Firefox. So as of now we're not connected to the actual network, but we're connected to the camera. So I'm going to type in 192.168.5.163. And as you can see, we have our login screen. Here we're going to type in admin, admin, as our default password and username. You don't need to save it unless you really want to. And you allow Adobe Flash to uh, run on this one. If you have an older version of Firefox or an older version of the Flash, you will want to update your Firefox um, as well as the Flash for the Flash to work. 
So as you can see, we have our preview. I'm gonna go ahead to configuration. This is where we have all our um, settings where we can go in here, do stream publish, uh, on-screen display, um, you know, resolution, so forth. But what we wanna do is go to our network configure. So we have network port. These are basically our settings required for other devices uh, such as uh, Visca. If you were to use a joystick controller, 1259 is the default. RTSP, 554, RTMP, 1935. So you can just make sure these are all correct for whatever platform you're planning on using. So as you can see, this is our camera's IP address that's already in the system. Let's also make the gateway. So we're gonna make that a 192.168.1.1. The reason why I'm doing this is I'm changing everything from the dot five to the dot one. This way, this matches our network that is currently here in existence where all our other devices are on so they can all see each other. And I can communicate to this camera um, using Wi-Fi. DNS as well, we're going to change that. Dot one, dot one. We don't have to worry about the alternate. You can do an 8.8.8.8 for Google if you'd like, but it's not necessary. So as we can see, we saved our settings, our ethernet here. This is the one we need to change to a dot one. So if I had left that a dot five, we would not be able to see this um, camera once we connected it to the actual network here, the local area network that is a 192.168.1.1 network. So again, save, DNS looks good. And now we're going to reboot. So close your browser up once you've done that. Give the camera, you know, a good minute or so to reset, restart, uh, attain its IP address. But what I'm gonna do is I'm now going to unplug the camera from my laptop and I'm going to plug it into my local area network switch. So now it is obtaining its uh, IP address. You can use the Wi-Fi settings on the um, laptop at this point. So technically all you need to do is go back to your settings here, select Wi-Fi on, select your network, And what this is doing is this is uh, automatically using, well, it's using DHCP to automatically select the, the proper IP address that's not already taken by another device. And the camera here, as we know, has its static IP address of 192.168.1.163. So I didn't change the host ID 163. You can, you can make it whatever you want up to 255. Um, but I just leave it at 163 for now for this particular um, situation. So I'm gonna open up my browser. And I'm gonna type in 192.168.1.163. And voila, now we have our login screen. If it was still at a dot five, we wouldn't be able to see this. We know something's wrong and then we need to go back into it and make sure that um, we saved everything and set everything properly. Admin, admin. If you have a plugin that's blocking that screen, make sure you uh, enable your plugin to accept it. Usually it's a little icon up here. Configuration again. Now we can see this is all good. We've got our, our network, we're connected with our laptop uh, via Wi-Fi. Um, so very nice, especially if you wanna walk around, you can unplug your power and basically go wherever you need to go and still be able to see the camera. And so that's pretty much it, folks, as far as how to connect it. If you prefer to use a wired connection, you can disable your uh, Wi-Fi, for instance. What I'll do first, though, is actually change my settings. So now I'm gonna go back into my 
my ethernet card, the hardwired port, and I'm gonna change it. And all you really need to do is you can do a static IP address if you want, but typically all you need to do at this point is do um, DHCP. So again, back to our uh, IPv4 here, get our properties, and you can change this to a one, and it will work, and your laptop will be static. Or you can just obtain IP address automatically, obtain DNS server automatically, hit OK. Make sure you plug in your wire. And it'll take a minute for it basically to sync. You don't have to turn off your Wi-Fi, you can. Usually um, it will disable. As you can see, it's identifying. And what this does essentially is hardwire is always faster than Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi tends to have a lag, um, especially if the camera's connected into this local switch and my laptop's connected in the local switch, you're just gonna avoid a lot of latency. And when you're videoing, it'll be more real time versus having this long lag. And as you can see, Very simple. And that's pretty much it, folks. Um, basically, again, you're gonna connect the camera to the laptop directly, configure the ethernet card uh, to match the camera's default IP address. And at that point, once you've done that, you've saved your information, you can go ahead and reconnect the camera to a local network switch, PoE preferred. Um, and that, that way you can actually unplug the camera from its power supply, throw that guy away, and now you're actually powered using uh, the ethernet cable for simplicity and overall um, aesthetics. So um, other than that, if you got any questions, please feel free to give us a call here at BZB Gear Tech Support. We're here to help and uh, we can easily walk you through this. Thanks for joining us and hopefully uh, you have a great day and we'll see you soon.